Hey, I'm Miss Chrissy. And I'm Steve. And you're listening to Jagcast, episode number 144, the podcast of the Jacobtown Arts Garage. Where we explore the intersection of the arts and technology. Yep, that's what well, we do sometimes. Welcome, sometimes. <laughs> welcome back to the pod, Chrissy. Thanks. Did I... you, did you uh, listen to the last episode where your replacement was here, Jason? I plead the fifth. <laughs> That's a great episode. So we yeah. we touched on the subject multiple times, and last week, Jason, uh, Jason, and I, or last two weeks ago, whatever, whenever that was, we had a great conversation about AI, AI, and like education and that kind of thing. And we're going to continue with this trend of talking about the subject that no one wants to hear about anymore, but is just everywhere right now in the uh, the tech press uh, and the tech world where I. Am situated because it's developer conference season. We just had the uh, Google I/O conference. We had Microsoft had a thing about Copilot plus PCs, and now my big thing is WWDC 24 is coming up in uh, very shortly in June, and it's now time for Apple to bring AI to all the things. And so I wanted to get your your views on the rumors, uh, Chrissy, uh, perspective okay. of someone uh, someone Are not gonna... like dish the tea or spill the tea spill, isn't spill that the what tea. they say i don't know days? i'm not i'm not sure what that means in the context of i think it's spill the tea is <laughs> okay well i i thought we we talk about this a bit because uh well you've been on you were busy you're out and we're already a little late this week getting this uh published and uh you use these tools a little bit yourself and we've talked about that in the past but what you haven't experienced yet is having the AI just thrust in your face and un inescapable in all of your <laughs> your devices. So that's I what... don't want the AI thrust in my face. What does that even mean? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what it's gonna mean. We're gonna we'll, we'll start. We'll look at the. Have you used the AI in Facebook yet? I don't. I haven't used that. Have you? Oh my god! I try to just search for something in Facebook, and it that that freaking thing takes over the search box. Yeah, I don't now. like shut up. I just want to search for something. Like, what are you doing? It's very annoying. Uh, on the other hand, there's useful stuff I use, like the Arc browser and Arc Search is what it's called on the iOS on your iPhone, and that has this neat little feature where you can say "Browse for me" on the on the iPhone app, and it'll go out and like gather some stuff from a from like some AI search engine and put together a little summary for you. And that can be useful and that has links. So you can go out to actually find the more details. What does the Facebook thing do? Do you I know? Oh man. I, I don't no, I, 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 I think it's just there to, to really piss us off. That's what it seems to be. Oh. Just like, like get out of my way. So I don't think Apple's gonna be that bad with 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 thrusting AI in our faces. I think Apple's gonna be more tasteful about it. And we're gonna look at the macrumors.com uh, page with some of the rumored things to be coming, and I'll, I'll get your your reaction to it. So let me bring it up. So here oh, we go. I can't see that. I made it bigger for you to see, and you still can't see. I can make it even bigger. No, I'm good. No, I got. My, I'm good. Okay. Okay. So this is the year of AI, every and and specifically generative AI because uh, Apple's used. AI in the past. So so the, the problem with the term AI is, first of all, it, there's no such thing as artificial intelligence. It's an umbrella term, a brand, a branding term more than anything else. In computer science, there are a whole bunch of technologies and areas of research that are under the overall umbrella of AI. But specifically, what we're talking about now is generative AI, things like large language models like ChatGPT, uh, diffusion models like to generate images. And do things like you can do in Photoshop, where you can you can like ask it to like create an image. You can ask it to do like a, a fill of a background on a cropped photo and make it bigger, uh, you know, and fill in the background, like that kind of thing. So that's what everyone expects. And Apple notoriously has uh, Dingus, aka, AKA Siri. We always say Dingus to try to prevent the uh, the device from activating. If you and. That product came out, I don't know how many years ago, right? And it just has never worked very well. So there's high hopes this year 
that we'll get some improvements there. So some of the things listed here. Yeah, these I don't think... sound terrible so far, unless I'm no, misunderstanding no. them. No, I mean, so if you saw the, if you saw the, you didn't, if you saw the Microsoft one, Microsoft had a, has a Copilot plus PC thing. Okay. Uh, maybe I can find it. And that thing is like a new kind of computer. Well, it's a laptop that where they, they've put a special processor in it to do neural network, neural stuff and the you know, AI stuff. And they have a button on it, Copilot button, but the thing that was weird about that one, uh, that was, I think they called a recall. They had a feature called recall, and that's their killer feature. Uh, I don't I think. I don't know what that. What, I'm what gonna, is I'm that? Explain it. I'm gonna. I'm trying to find a good web page to explain. Killer to... feature. <laughs> yeah, their killer. Fe their killer feature. That's what they they call it, the killer feature. Uh, I don't, what does that mean? Like their best feature, or like their most impress? What do you, what do yeah, you mean yeah. by killer? Well, I was trying to find I was trying to find a website for it. Uh, it's the well, I can't really find a good website for it. <clears throat> the feature is on the Microsoft Copilot Plus PCs, you can have the computer take screenshots of everything you're doing, you know, whenever something changes significantly, and then you can ask the computer to find stuff in those photos essentially. So you can be like if you were looking at uh your I don't know, if you were looking at some website like a week ago, and you can't remember what it was. You can you can say, uh, "What's what was that website that I was looking on for costumes? It had like a yellow dress with frilly parts or something." You could say something like that, and then what they've been what they do is they take these screenshots and then they have like vision algorithms to try to identify all the stuff that's on them, and then they have an index of that so you can uh, you can query it, and then the the computer will be like, "Oh." Here it is from like last Thursday at three o'clock and it shows you the picture and you can show you the, you know, you can find the website again. So that kind of thing. Now, a lot of people think that's creepy because it is creepy, but you do have a lot of privacy controls on it. So I'm not going to say that it's 100 percent a bad idea. So but wait, wait, hold on. This computer is going to take screenshots of everything you do on the computer. Yes, that's what the Microsoft is. That's their. I'm I'm doing this to, in order to contrast what I think Apple's going to do. So can I eat um, a pretzel? Uh, you can do I, whatever you want. It's your podcast too. I'm going to mute myself. Hang on. Okay. Well, you while you're eating, eating the pretzel, I'm I'm trying to set this up as a contrast because Microsoft's big killer feature, the thing they think is the most awesome, valuable thing about their new products, is this recall feature that a lot of people instinctively think is creepy and you, you can, and you, and as far as I understand you, and this could change or could be mistaken, but I think you have to opt out of it to turn it off. Like it's on by default, it takes up storage on your drive, but the idea makes some sense. I mean, it, it does sound like it could be useful, uh, especially depending on how well it works, but I don't think people really like that idea like on its face to have your computer, that to me seems like an extremely intrusive way of putting so-called AI right in your face in a new product. And it's the centerpiece of Microsoft's strategy of these new, this new line of laptops to compete against Apple's laptops. And, and I'm like, that's very, it's very Microsoft. -y. Now there's other things you can do, you know, like I think it could do real time, like translations, I think of stuff or, or, or maybe it's sub subtitling. I'm not sure which. It could do other th other things, but that's like their big headliner. Meanwhile, I think on Apple's side, uh, I think we're going to be. I think Apple is going to be a little more tasteful about uh, about what they're actually offering, and they're going to integrate this. I think a little bit better. And so, bring back up the screen share. So, <clears throat> some of the things that are pretty definitely, I think, going to happen is number one. I think Siri is going to have a better better uh voice and i know you like the australian man right yeah i don't want to change my siri voice well it might be a little maybe it won't change the voice too much but it'll be more naturally natural communication oh, i like my weird siri <laughs> well maybe it'll, they'll keep the voice around they have multiple versions in there but i think they're going to do some kind of improvements with with it so that you'll be able to have more conversational capabilities and actually have it work the idea with Siri was always that you could just ask it things in natural language, like add this to my calendar, blah, blah, blah. And it would kind of Oh, work. I'm always yelling at Siri. Yeah. So th hopefully that'll be the big thing that gets improved and you'll be able to ask it to do useful things and actually have it understand, you know, what to do a little bit better. 
uh, and also be able to communicate, uh, you know, more fluently back to you. So I think one of the things they're, they're going to do is have a lot of summarization capabilities, like be able to ask it to summarize your your notifications. I know you have like hundreds of notifications all the time, so maybe yeah. you'll be able to ask it You're to gonna be able to summarize that because. I <laughs> well, I don't summarize. know. We'll see. That'll be we'll interesting. See. That's one of the things that large language models are good at is summarizing right. stuff. So yeah, you know many notifications I have. It's how many? At the moment, I'm on like page four of the scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> in in iMessage. Or, I'm still uh, scrolling. Still scrolling. Wow. Still scrolling. Yeah. So, you know that that might be helpful for you if it can do that. I also have nine hundred and fifty nine on red text messages. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's I think going to be the big thing that might be useful to you. What do you think about that? What do you think if uh besides the voice maybe changing, do you think uh Is summarization? It summarize and, and better natural language conversation. I don't care about the natural language. I would like to not have to yell at it for it to reply. What do you mean yell? At? Like it won't hear you, or you just have to keep saying the same thing until I, it figures it out. I have to out? keep saying the same thing. That well, I would like. Yeah, let's hope. That. I, I think that is a is a pretty good possibility that we're going to have something like so have better <laughs> better Siri communication. So that'll be fun. Uh, voice so, memo. I hope they don't get rid of my man. Your Australian man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you really like that one. I just use the default American female Siri voice and it works. Most fine. people do. But yeah, I think it's I think it's um most people like or prefer the sound of female voices, apparently. That's like why they're all all these assistants are female vo um voiced. And uh so whatever. But other things, apparently there might be an option to generate your own emojis. What do you think about that? Uh yeah, okay. Fine. Think the kids will like that? Maybe. Are they, out, are they over emojis now? Is it no longer about I emojis? I don't know if they emoji a lot. I don't know. I mean, what are you going <laughs> to be like? Give me... I mean, I guess it could be fun. See, all that stuff when... I never spend time on that stuff. Like, No, that seems kind of... That seems kind of... Bitmojis were like... Everybody had a bitmoji. We had bitmojis. We, we were like constantly bitmojiing during the pandemic. I didn't bitmoji. I had one bitmoji, and I think you made it. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you used the used the little stickers. Yeah, barely. But I have to, okay. That's cool, but I'm not like jumping up and down. <clears throat> okay, but yeah, that's not so. That's probably more of an iMessage thing that's going to be in there. So photo stuff. You do a lot of, um, you know, you make things for your business in Canva and everything like that. Photo yeah. retouching is supposed to get better. Like you'll be able to, like they already have an option to remove backgrounds, like pull stuff out. I think they're going to improve that. And you might be able to remove objects. I think that's something you can do on maybe the Samsung yeah, phones. Yeah, on one of those Sam, yeah, one of those phones yeah. you can do that. The Google Pixel or something. Yeah, so you should be able to do something like that, which means you could take uh, photos that you have and you can kind of clean them up a, a little better, remove like, you can remove the um, the cat from the background maybe. Yeah, that sounds like cool. That. <clears throat> that's cool. That's nice. But uh, suggested replies, that's something Gmail does. So now you might have that embedded in messages and in email. But you don't use the email program, so that probably doesn't affect no, you that much. <clears throat> um, the recap of notifications and messages, we kind of talked about that. Sounds interesting. I feel like the the web searching, oh, I What's mentioned Arc. Spotlight. Spot, spotlight when you're on your phone anyway. You know, you pull down on the on the home screen. There's a little search box. That's Spotlight. Spot. What is it? Like, just go to your your home screen and just kind of like pull down a little on your, with your thumb. You'll oh, see a little search. Hold down. Or t or tap the little hour. I think there's a little magnifying glass icon on the bottom. You can tap. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you know the grid of icons. Just kind of hold. Put your thumb and drag down. I don't see icons. <laughs> no, on your <laughs> <laughs> the whole phone is icons. <laughs> All right, you have to you have to show me that later. What? I don't know what that is. So okay, Apple. Oh, you, you oh this this search thing down here. Yes, the search oh, thing. Oh, I never use that. <laughs> well, oh, that's there. We go. <laughs> well, improving that. Apparently, that'll be improved. 
faster, well, luckily better Luckily, I website. found it now that they can improve it. <laughs> yeah, Apple needs to work on its discoverability. Yes, they do. I didn't know. <laughs> That's helpful. I didn't know that was there. Yeah, it searches a whole bunch of stuff, including your messages, your email. It'll Wait, search... this searches more than just... This don't, don't show everything? it on the screen. Don't show your... Oh. Don't show your phone on this podcast. But yeah, uh, it searches a whole bunch of stuff, and you can, it, you can it'll search inside apps that opt in to do that. I have never done this. It's actually useful as it is. I use it all the time. That's how I navigate stuff. You've never seen me. It, Every time I get your so... phone, I'm... If this you hand me your phone new... to look up something, that's what I do. How I pull do I that this again. Hold on. You can just do pull I... down. Hold on. I'm turning off the phone. And I'm going to start over and make sure I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning off the phone? Ugh. This oh, is my, cool, like... Steve. Yeah. <laughs> we'll discover something new. Something that's been around for like a decade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what Apple needs to work on? Discoverability. <laughs> yes, discoverability. Well, they, they put do. that little icon, that little uh, magnifying glass icon on the bottom there, I think, to help with that. I think that's what they did. It it's didn't tiny. Work. Yeah, well, because it's tiny. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> that's cool. I like yeah, that. Yeah, so may improve that. So you should, you should play around and see what you can do with that. I use that all the time. Uh, uh, here's something I think would be cool for you. The What do you think about like uh, better auto-generated Apple Music playlists? I mean, like mood that, based mood based i like mean something like mood all of my playlists are jacked up so any improvement will be good yeah my my playlist any of the generated from apple ones are always jacked up because of work it's like my my job skews the what it thinks yeah. i like yeah what about <clears throat> so one of the things they're going to do probably is change AI. the change the home screen it's not necessarily ai related but like you the the rumor is you can be able to completely change your home screen so it's no longer a grid you can literally put things anywhere on the screen so i imagine that your phone might resemble your desktop yeah i don't need that that's bad <laughs> it's just, just so many things on your turn desktop. that off can they actually can they put the grid feature on my desktop that would be there cool. there is a, that is on your desk that is a thing on mac os you can turn it on where it'll really? clean things up it'll lock things where? in place it's I'm I can't look at it at the moment I'm re recording a podcast but it's a uh, it's one of the uh okay, let me see if I, I can need that can uh yeah you can use you can clean up the you can use stacks you can uh sort things snap to grid is I think what you're thinking of you can turn if you right click on the desktop uh right. you, there's there's options like sort by and there's one of them snap to grid and if you clean up it'll like arrange things you can use stacks and it'll take everything that's the same file type and put it together in one icon that you that oh, don't expand don't that. And stuff. so anyway that stuff's in there uh you just didn't oh. know again discoverability discoverability apple uh but the i think that's gonna be pretty cool for the, the everybody likes uh messing around with the, your, your home screen but besides that, do you use you? You said you use uh, some writing stuff in was it in Canva or Wix where it writes some text oh, for you? I don't. Yeah, I I'm not a fan of writing in general, and um, like so copywriting or like um, you know a little like a little blurb on like my website or something that like welcome to like the welcome blurb. Or I'm not very good at those. So I use the AI writing stuff in those. If in pages would be good because I could use it for emails. Because e right write now emails and pages? No, but I could. <laughs> It'll probably be an e the mail app too. No, not like not like a regular email, like a oh like a email that has like, like information in it. Like a newsletter? yeah 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 you could ai assisted writing that's a thing that's everyone's doing i like the idea of the slide deck stuff because you know uh and i wonder if i could even kind of use it to help me make thumbnails because you could because keynote keynote is an amazing piece of software if you never used it much no, uh, it's actually it's actually really useful for uh for prototyping software too like apple even has a developer videos dating back many years now to talk about it 
but it's actually really cool because you can do animations you can have things you can like link slides together with a with clickable areas and you can have like things animate around and it's it's really cool so the idea that you could have it uh, help you create slide decks i think that's fun i mean that's again none of these things are new and apple's not first to it but these are i think pretty useful so you go into keynote be able to be like i want like a space maybe you can say like i want a space themed you know slide deck with like a big fonts kind of bluish hue or something i don't know stuff like that and then it'll just like spit up some generated stuff that you can start with that might be cool if that's how it works i could I would, i'd use that i use the canva tools to try to generate some images but i haven't found a tool that i want to use that lets me just say i just want a thumbnail that looks kind of like this like i just want you to make this like make it in a rectangle this I size i feel like just... the canva generated images are really just like a oh you're, you're um, getting all these I'm notifications. Beeping. I'm sorry. I, d I thought they were off. See? <laughs> See? <I> thought... <laughs> you can, there's a button. There's a do not disturb button. You can I know, in the control I center. I know. I wrong. Well, you, just... can, like, you can pull down Some from the top and hit the button. things come through sometimes. Um, okay. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, the, I feel like a lot of those tools in like Canva, they're just like jumping off points. Like you can't actually use what they give you from the get-go. I don't think. Do you? No, you can't. Like, you can't. Like, what I want is I want to be, I want something that says, that gives me, like, an entire, like, thumbnail is my main thing. I want to say, give me an entire thumbnail. I don't expect it to ever give me, in one shot, everything I need. But it, Canva's very limited. I found that it, it can generate an image, but it can't generate, like, I can't give it the dimensions exactly that I want. It's kind of like you can make it square. You can make it maybe rectangular. But uh, I have used it. Like, famously for us, I used it to make a little alien alien and a uh, little house yeah, ufo her. thing and that took a bunch and also i used it to make like a little spider-man yeah, my, my thing is this is my thing about the imagery on canva yeah does it take less time than me just taking what's in my head and then searching it myself at this point it Wait, does searching not. in your head or oh, searching no, for like in my themes. head i have like a vague idea just searching for the elements well, no, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's trying to, I think, be like to, it's, it's trying to work with that kind of, that kind of workflow. Like you, you have a vague idea. So the whole idea of a lot of these generative stuff is you have a vague idea. If you can write it down in kind of natural, like English, then these models can take that in and then give you something approximating, like some options that sort of are maybe like what you were had in your mind. Like that's the idea behind it. I, I don't expect any of this stuff to ever work one shot, like where you you just put in some text and gives you exactly what you want. But if you have some idea, like I want, uh, I like I've done this before. I said I wanted that alien one was one, but one of them I said like I wanted like a portal. I wanted like Spider Man jumping through a portal or something. And uh, and I uh, that's actually probably pretty tough because I, I think it's because it's copyrighted. You probably can't do Spider Man in general. But you're like I want a portal and I want it to be like this color and maybe look more like fire base or something and then you could it, it'll generate some options and then you'll you'll look at them and pick one and then sometimes uh what these tools let you do is you can then keep iterating on it a few more rounds and kind of use that as an input for the next yeah but you can't round. like edit Not canva them. i think though. well you, you can put them into a canva and then just do whatever you want with them but yeah know. they're not so easy to edit. I did it. it wasn't worth my trouble i spent all this time trying to do something and, and it took me like yeah half the time to just do it on my own no yeah, that's I mean, true Can still using the canva tools just like putting them together myself yeah i've had like half the time i've had some limited success like i've been able to generate stuff for thumbnails with it but it takes multiple tries it's a little it's definitely slow but uh you know if you have a, a decent idea of kind of what you want and you're you're okay with just picking something from one of the four options it gives you yeah, I mean, you're cool. That's why I think these tools are really useful. I'm not going to hire somebody to make a thumbnail for one of our podcasts. That's insane. Like, you know, like, for, these, they're not big enough for, to, for that to matter. You need something to put on, like, YouTube and to put on the uh, podcast apps. Uh, I would just like to make that workflow a little easier to do. Uh, and uh, and I use these tools to help me generate some stuff because I'm not an artist. And if I want, like, a, an alien, I'm not going to be able to draw that. So... Well, there. I mean, I guess if you were yeah. looking for an alien, maybe. But yeah. so Keynote might be a. Might, you don't do slide decks a lot, but I like uh, Keynote. Um, did you just okay. did you just activate the 
the camera thing? Did you, did you see something pop up on your screen? No. No? Okay. okay. We'll have to review with footage later. <laughs> so uh, what else is in here might be interesting? Code writing stuff you don't care about, but I'm excited for in Xcode. We'll see how that works out. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else uh, they might be doing. I mean, it's there's only so many things that are kind of useful with these tools, despite what all the hype uh, tells you. The the use cases are kind of, you know, chat bots, which have varying forms of utility. Uh, you know, you could do stuff with images, which I think are most useful for us, and text, a lot of text-based stuff, like summarization, uh, helping you yeah, write. I find that drafts. the most helpful. Yeah. 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 That's what I find the most helpful. I mean, but again, it's never usable the first time. It's always something weird about it and you have to fix it. Haven't well, you yeah. noticed that? There's always like one or two words off that you're like, huh, that makes it sound really strange, you know? But if you just, it's like a good, I think it's a good like jumping off point. Yes. It gets I, I, the words on the paper and then you can fix them. Yeah. Now, I don't it's, usually use any of that stuff I, I find that i can write fine without it yeah uh, but... well so canva has a cup it's called like magic rate or something and then you can make it there's like all the 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 choices of what you can do actually i find are pretty interesting it's like um sprinkle it with fairy dust <laughs> make <laughs> it more it formal yeah um yeah so and then it oh, makes it like more whimsical and that's usually when it gets really weird but sometimes you come up with like an, a, a better more interesting word than the like basic word you had there but mm. i mean again if you i bet you if you liked writing you could probably do that faster just like i i mean i'm not an artist but i don't mind visual things so like the yeah. visual stuff doesn't take me super long <clears throat> so this is all kind of what the idea with the possibly what what the home screen is like you could do stuff like this blank I, spaces I and line stuff up. oh uh also it looks like cal you don't use reminders much do you because apparently it's supposed to be better integration calendar reminders which which leads me to to thinking they're going to be sherlocking fantastic out <laughs> a little bit i don't i don't know i don't know what that means sherlocking it's when uh, yeah. Apple Apple takes a, a, an app that's real popular, and they take like like the feature of it, and they just they implement it themselves in in some oh. uh, one of their apps. It's famous because uh, it's like a it's a law it's a term that we use in the Apple community for a long time. RCS support, so now you'll be able to uh, talk to Steph. She has a she's in um, a uh, Android phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you have better messaging, uh, better quality, like audio and video, and uh, conversations with android phones so it won't be so bad anymore uh yeah and then there'll be stuff on mac but yeah i mean that's this is what their their rumors are it's like exactly what you'd expect and i but what i think apple does better than google is they just have better taste in general with this stuff and they tend to not throw it in your face quite as much and i think that uh, that that's the line that i feel like apple is gonna have to walk and is that i i, I don't know you tell me how do you feel in general about all this AI hype? Like, do you have like any particular feelings about it? I think you hear a lot more about the hype than I do. Right. Well, that makes sense. That's why I'm saying Apple is th like, this is in my opinion, when the hype reaches normal people is going to be September, October when iOS 18 comes out mm -hmm. and the stuff is available to everybody. I, don't hate some of the Canva things. Some of them I don't think are particularly useful. I never use those things you use. I don't even know what they're called. What is it? Chat something. Chat GPT. Yeah, I never use those. Copilot. I don't. I don't really. I don't use even know what either. you. I think I tried once, and then they wanted me to like sign up or something, and I was like, forget this. I'm not signing up. Well, that's why I use Copilot because I don't have to sign up. <laughs> anyway, and um. Yeah, but I don't think I'm hearing as much hype about it as you are. No, but you will because once Apple does something, then like so-called, you know, normal people all of a sudden know something exists. And I, I think that this last year, there's been a lot of hype in the tech world. There's been a lot of hype in the, the tech press. But 
in at least in North America, I mean, uh, Apple is a pretty dominant force, especially on iPhone for iPhones. So I just think that while a lot of people are using these tools, it's still not everybody. But once Apple has it integrated in iOS and Mac OS and iPad OS, it's like suddenly people are going to experience it for maybe the first time, you know, integrated into their their computing platforms. And we're going to see how it really works for people, you know. So I'm 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 curious. I'm real, I'm real curious about it because I still think most of these tools have limited utility, you know, for most people. Like it's not um, it's not like they are going to you know completely change your life but you know overnight but we'll see we will see i do like the i like that it just gives you sometimes a little jumping off point that i find useful i have no idea what that facebook what do you even use facebook ai for don't know i don't know i i have no idea what that is i i, I do not understand uh why they did that yeah i don't know <laughs> And I can't even. They have like a meet your new assistant, but with is Llama it supposed 3. to be an assistant? I don't even understand is what that it is. What it is supposed to be? I I know. don't know. That's what I asked you. I just try to well, stay away from it. Here's the well. Here's the meta. Look at we can look at the meta uh, article about it. Apparently, hmm. maybe. So here's the here's the meta's article about it. Meet your new assistant, Meta AI built with Llama 3. Do you even know what all these words mean? Nope. <laughs> Llama 3 is a model. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay, so you with their takeaways. According to Meta, this is supposed to be a better assistant. Thanks to our advances with Meta Llama 3, we believe Meta AI, oh my God, how many times do I have to say AI and Meta, is now the most intelligent AI assistant you can use for free. Okay, uh, you can apparently... Uh, what does it do? I know. I'm, <laughs> I know. What does it do? You can use it. You can use Meta AI in feed, chat, search, and more. Okay, but what does it do? Faster images. Meta AI's image generation. Okay, so at least it generates images. But what does it do? Okay. Oh, here's an example. <clears throat> Planning a night out with friends? Ask Meta AI to recommend a restaurant with sunset views and vegan options. Okay. And then it's going to, like, give you options, I guess. That's where do you good. even do that? You apparently you just kind of do it wherever you are, have a chat box or search box, and it's an option. That's why it's integrated everywhere. Uh, you could ask Meta AI to imagine the aesthetic you're going for, and we'll generate inspiration photos for your furniture shopping. These are stupid things. I'm sorry. These are stupid tasks. I think they're stupid. Uh, anything like not How stupid? Is this an assistant. Because it's assisting you in recipes doing... for. Homemade dressing. There you go. So, so it's Google. Yeah, Google has an AI. Did you see how bad the Google AI search thing rollout has been? It's been embarrassing. No. It's been so bad. Like it was like I think famously it said something about using glue Why to make pizza. Why is in Facebook? Because everybody has Why to put AI Facebook in everything. Put Google inside of it. Because <laughs> it's their own Google. <laughs> Oh my God! They have an That's imagined what it is, right. I mean, yeah, it's the same. It's everything is like the same tools, just All right, so their own whatever. their own versions of it. They make everything look plastic. Okay. Well, yeah. So apparently, that's what. Uh, well, that's what it does. It's dumb. It's Google. They put Google in Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. And I, I guess they're probably going to use all of our data to train their AI models. So that's going to be fun. I don't know how you feel about that. Like, all, what if all of your photos, all of your the posts you've made on Instagram and Facebook and, and places are now being ingested into giant computer uh, server farms in order to, to train AI models? I mean, I don't particularly like that, I think, because these models are stochastic. They, like, they, they remix and spit out stuff that was in the training model, right? So it's like my text and my photos, especially like the photo stuff, I think, can then kind of leak through in some capacity it's like like especially with the photos these systems can take all the photos that some photographer has posted on the internet for years and then ape his style just like and, and output photos that look like photos that that photographer took especially if it's something i would say like um like landscape or something or portraiture or something like that where you know it we systems are good at generating like fake looking people and 
and fake landscapes, you know, and then like people can just generate photos that look like your photos and how you might not be able to tell them apart, you know? So the thing I got going for me is that I, I basically only post photos of live events. So it's like, even if you ape that, it's like, so you made a photo of a non-existent event. It's like, okay. Yeah, but, I guess so. but it's still like, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. These companies, everybody, they're ingesting all this data and it's, and it's just like, it's not opt in. Usually it's like, usually you have to opt out <clears throat> and I don't like that. You know, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's tough. What else is going on with the, in the AI world? So <laughs> we have AI in our Facebook, okay. we have Google in our Facebook. We're going to have, we're going to have, I guess, Canva in our, in our pages and our, in our, in our keynotes and our photos app. Essentially, every see, it seems like everything is, is some variation on the same like core set of tools and just everyone's making their own version of it. And what's, yeah, that's what it seems like. And there's only a few foundational models that everybody uses. Like everybody uses like OpenAI, the you know, ChatGPT models or, or Llama, which is Meta's and Google has Gemini. And it's like there's like three big models. And then Apple's probably making some of their own. But apparently they just closed a deal with OpenAI is being reported. So they're going to use open AI's chat GPT stuff in the, for some things. So I don't know how they're going to do this and maintain privacy. Uh, they will tell us at WWDC. Cool. All yeah, right. So. Well, you let me know when that happens. I think it's next week or something, right? Uh, June 10th. So that's oh, like an, so two like weeks. Week. Yeah. She, it, I thought it would be next week, but I think it, but it wasn't, it is like a, it's the next week after that. It's and recital I taking, week. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Wait, that's recital week. We we still haven't even figured out what we're doing to record recital or anything. I know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're, we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna do it with the help of AI. Maybe I'll ask uh, Facebook to imagine how I can how I can film properly the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the recital. I don't know. Facebook, imagine a recital full of hundreds of little dancers. What is the best strategy? for photographing that. Yeah. It's a big theater. It's a thing. Yeah. Okay. So that is the oncoming AI revolution coming to your coming to your iPhone in a few months. Uh, well, technically a couple weeks, but it won't really be available to the public for a while after that. I don't so final thoughts on AI coming for your iPhone, Chrissy, what, yeah. what do you think? That wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I don't think Apple's going to go the real scary route. That well, that's they know smart the, because they that know the other customer. things sound scary, <laughs> creepy. Recall? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's not technically scary, like on a t like you know, even if it, I don't know, I don't, I wouldn't trust it. I turn off everybody I know that all the technologists that I know we're all like, no, we would turn that off immediately. We're like, we're not going to have that. Even if it's useful, I'm like, I'm not going to have everything on my screen, uh, have screenshots taken of it. And like on a windows machine, like I, I'd have no I trust that that data is not going to be somehow, you know, accessible and with a virus or something. It's like, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not going to do it. Best thing to do. If you don't want, you don't want, um, you know, some data leakage, just don't create the data. <laughs> so that's what I would do. Not create it. Uh, uh, so yeah, so I think Apple's going to be more tasteful about it and we're going to find out and we're going to do a follow up, or at least I will, I will, I will definitely talk to you about what I see at WWDC, uh, in a future episode, uh, you know, after dub dub comes out. So, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's just it, right? It's a pretty short episode. Yeah. Wrap it up, Steven. Okay, I guess we're going to just kind of wrap it up. Uh, okay. Well, if you like what we are cooking here on the podcast, please remember to subscribe on YouTube and click that bell and like it and you know share it with people because that's how share these it. that's how these algorithms uh, can recognize us. You can also find us at Instagram and Facebook at Jagdash Garage. You can find the entire audio back catalog of this podcast at jagcast.show if you just like to subscribe with your podcast player. You can go to jagdtownartsgarage.com to see our website, uh, which is a uh, which is this nice website yes. right here. 
And you can sign up for our newsletter so you'll get updated when we have new posts, uh, new podcast episodes or other things we might be doing in the future. So I really, I really recommend if you do nothing else, please subscribe to the newsletter. I don't really send out stuff. Right now I'm only sending out stuff like when there's a new episode of the podcast every two weeks. But this way, even if the algorithms, you know, hate us, we can still uh, keep in touch with you all out there. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to support us monetarily, you can also go to jengtonosgarage.com slash coffee and uh, buy us a coffee and uh, yeah, help us pay the uh, hosting bills for, for the podcast. Yep. All right, Steve, I think you have to um, play the video now. <laughs> yeah. I love, we got to work out our outros. We're not very, not very good at the outros. <laughs> I thought that was uh, a good outro. <laughs> no, it is. Okay, it is. Okay. Just well then, I will I will talk to you later, Chrissy. All right, bye Steve. Bye. We'll learn to break the ice together.